DC Lesson 8 Part B. It's the second half of series parallel circuits. So about this lesson. In this lesson we're going to explain how to reduce the circuit to a single equivalent resistance. We're going to cover ways of calculating total power taken by the circuit and the power taken by each component. So if you're following along in the textbook, um, that's um, Electrical Principles by Phillips. This is Chapter 8, Sections uh, 8.3, 8.4, Ohm's Law in Series Parallel Circuits, and Power in Series Parallel Circuits. Then we're going to do a summary at the very end for both Lesson A and B. So on Ohm's Law in Series Parallel Circuit, as in a series or a parallel circuit, Ohm's law is used to find the current or voltage in a part or maybe even all of a series parallel circuit. You'll often need to do several steps before you know enough or can gain enough knowledge to find the unknown voltage or current. So quite often we've got to do some simplification to get down to got to have at least two things to be able to find the third. That's how Ohm's Law works. Ohm's Law is a normally a three element equation and you've got to know two to find out the third. So here's an example. We've got a DC power supply in this particular case set to 10 volts and uh, we're going to calculate the current in each resistor. So we want to find the current in I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, etc. Now we know what the voltage total is, and we know the resistance value of each of the resistors. You can see there, R1 is 200 ohms, R2 at 20 ohms, R3 at 200, R4 at 800, and finally R5 at 160. So in this example, let's find the current in R1. It's reasonably straightforward. It's just going to be I equals the voltage total divided by the resistor. So in this particular case we've got 10 volts divided by 200 ohms is going to give us 50 milliamps. Step 2a to find the current in the resistor first simplify the resistor network. So we're moving along to the second part and we've got to simplify the resistor network. We're going to find I2 we're going to have to simplify R3, R4, and R5. Now they're all in parallel, of course. So 1 on 200 plus 1 on 800 plus 1 on 60, 160, I should say. And invert that back, and you will get 80 ohms. So we've simply, I'll just get the pen turned on. All we've done is the parallel of those resistors and when we parallel those values we will get 80 ohms and if that's 80 ohms plus our 20 our equivalent resistance out here I'll just draw it zigzaggy because it's easy is going to be obviously 100 ohms nice and easy. So now that we know that it's 100 ohms, we can now work out the current, can't we? We know it's 10 volts across the network, and we know it's 100 ohms, so simply we know that I equals V on R. So we're going to have 10 divided by 100, and that's going to be 0 0.1 of an amp or 100 milliamps. So if we've reduced it down and we've found out the is 100 ohms, so we've just done with the previous slide, and there's the maths I2 equals V total divided by the uh, resistance, which we worked out to be 100 ohms. As I said, it turns out to be 100 milliamps. So again, just simple application of 
Ohm's law. There's the Ohm's law application. I equals V on R. So uh, next we need to find the current in the remaining resistors. So first find the voltage drop across them. So if we uh, if we know the current, we're going to be able to work out the voltage. So we know that we have I2 is 100 milliamps. And again, let's just go back to our good old Ohm's law. Volts equals R times I. So here we've got 20 ohms multiplied by 0 0.1 and it equals 2 volts. Same here with our R5. We know, we know what, the, um, what the voltage drop is across these. So we don't know what the current is or the voltage sorry the current is through each of the resistors but we know that because we have 10 volts applied across the circuit therefore whatever's left across R5 is the voltage across the entire network so simply this is equal to 10 minus 2 being 8 volts so we've used more Kirchhoff's voltage law to work out the 8 volts because we don't know yet what the current is in I5 or I4 or I3. We know it adds up to 100 milliamps but we don't know what it is. So we've used Ohm's law there and we've used Kirchhoff's voltage law here. So let's use Ohm's law now to find the current in each of the resistors. And obviously we now know the voltage across R3, R4 and R5 is 8 volts. So again, just using Ohm's law, we know that I equals V divided by R. So we know that, say, voltage across 3 is 8 volts divided by our 200 ohms. So there's our first equation. I'll just go backwards and then forwards again, get rid of the my scrawlings. So there it is laid out nice and neatly. I3 would be V2 divided by I3 and that, on the slideshow, we've worked out the, um, the V2 first and got, sorry, the I3 first. Then I4 at 10 milliamps, and then finally I5. And if we add the three currents together just to double check ourselves so if we add these three together it equals 100 milliamps which was the total current in the circuit there it is there there's the 100 milliamps in that branch of the circuit so we've worked out the voltages and we've worked out the currents. So if you go to page 149 to 152 and try have yourself, having a go yourself um, and write up example 8.4 into your own notes. It'd be great practice. So just another network for you to do here. So we're now going to look at uh, power in series parallel circuit. A series parallel circuit can be represented by a single equivalent resistance. If you know the value of this resistance and either the applied voltage or the current, the total power can be taken by any series parallel circuit 
is found using the power equations. Also, if you know the individual power values per component, it doesn't matter whether they're in series or parallel, you just power 1 plus power 2 plus power 3 plus power 4, etc. will give you the total power in the circuit. So let's look at a little example when we're going to find the total power taken by this particular circuit. So we've got 30 volts applied. We've got a 600 ohm resistor in parallel with a network that has a 90 ohm and a 300 and a 700 in parallel with it. So let's reduce the parallel straight up. So that's what we're doing here. Let me just quickly explain it. So all we're doing here is the parallel. So 300 in parallel with 700 gives us 210. We take the 210 and we add the 90 here, gives us an overall equivalent resistance of 300 ohms. If we then take the 300 ohms and we parallel it with the original 600, remember the, the 600 was out here on the power supply, our 600 was out here. We're now paralleling that with the 300. We will end up with an overall equivalent resistance of 200 ohms. Now we know we've got 200 ohms, and if our memory serves, we had um, 30 volts across it. Therefore, I don't know, we'll go I total. Will equal V total divided by R total. So we should have something in the order of 30 volts divided by 200 ohms. And they should have done that for us. So our final total resistance is equivalent circuit. And if we want to find the total power, we can go V squared divided by R, or we could have found the current and gone I squared R. So if you remember up here, we ended up with 150 milliamps. So we know what the voltage was, so we can go down the voltage route, V squared by R, or we could have got the current, and we know that the power is also equal to I multiplied by V, and we could have gone 0.15 multiplied by 30 also equals 4.5 watts. So two ways of working out power. Either way is acceptable. So a series parallel circuit has components connected in both series and parallel. A series parallel circuit can be simplified by finding an equivalent resistance value for groups of interconnected resistors. And remember the principle of big picture, little picture. So look at the big picture, determine what the smaller groupings are, and then simplify the smaller groupings. Simplification often involves redrawing a series parallel circuit as it contains, so it only contains parallel or series connected circuits. And one of my favorite things to uh, hammer with my students is draw the circuit diagram, draw the circuit diagram. As you recalculate it, redraw it. It will save errors. Simplification of a series parallel circuit is generally needed in order to calculate the voltages, the resistance, the current, and often the power values in the circuit. The voltage drop, current, power dissipation in a single resistor can be found with Ohm's law 
and or Kirchhoff's current and voltage laws. These laws also provide a nice cross check. You remember I did the I squared R with the previous example? Nice way to just double check yourself. So this brings us to the end of DC lesson 8 part B. I hope you've enjoyed a bit more problem solving around series parallel circuits and particularly how we deal with power and remember when you've worked out the power of any of the components no matter where they sit in the circuit the total power is just addition of all the powers.